Hey guys, Kiara Bickers here, author of Bitcoin Clarity, bringing you a new Bitcoin series I'm calling Bitcoin and Chill. A couple of you have reached out to me on Twitter reminding me to make videos to post videos, and I thought, what better way to do that than to post the videos I already have made? So thank you for those who have reminded me. I do intend to make more content. And just to make it a little more visually stimulating for you, Bitcoin and Chill is going to be brought to you from a nice riverbed, and next one maybe we'll do from the mountains. If you watch to the end, you're going to learn more about how I think about abstract thinking and systems thinking. If you enjoy the video and you get something productive out of it, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any ideas for me for new videos, please leave them in the comments. So this video is called Abstract Thinking. We're going to talk about what the purpose of abstraction is, how to know what to not pay attention to. So the systems that we're going to talk about are going to get, at times, fairly complicated because you're going to need to have a background knowledge of three different things in order to understand this one thing right moving forward. And it really, really helps to know what not to pay attention to. So we're just going to talk about that generally here. I have this concept called the art of Imagineering that we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about why your ability to think in terms of abstraction is necessary for understanding Bitcoin. I have a I have a friend and I have a few friends like this. You probably do as well. People who are just super literal. And if you if you think very literally, it's going to be really hard to understand so much of this because you have to you have to know that Bitcoin is all just bits, right? Like everything about the blockchain is just bits. So when you talk about blocks and when you talk about chains and when you talk about like literally everything that we use to describe the blockchain, it is all an abstraction. It's all objects that we create in our mind to better understand what's going on at the level of bits. So, all right, let's just dive into it. The purpose of abstractions is to open up new ways of thinking. Mental models are internal abstractions that simplify external systems. So there was this artistic movement called surrealism and without getting into the politics of what that movement was, I'm going to just use this example because I think it helps us understand the idea of being literal versus being abstract. And this is a painting called This is Not a Pipe. In French, it literally says this is not a pipe. And what what the artist meant by that was this is not a pipe, this is a painting of a pipe. right? But when we all look at this painting, we understand that it's a painting of a pipe. But we don't say it's a painting of a pipe, we say it's a pipe. Okay? Map is not the territory. This was a quote by Alfred Korlipsky. I'm probably butchering his name a little bit. Alfred Korlipsky. So what he argued was that human knowledge of the world was limited by both the human nervous system and the languages that we've developed. So that no one actually had direct access to reality. It's always filtered by our senses and, and also our language. So it's sort of like a Noam Chomsky sort of figure. D.H. Lawrence said this, the map appears more real than the land. He was a poet and what he meant by that was that our mental models and the way we internally think about the world feels more real and is more real to us than the actual reality that we're interacting with. Our inner reality is more rich and more real than the external reality that we're dealing with. And I think he was right about that. Taking this fundamental understanding that you are limited in your ability to perceive the world because of your senses. You can only perceive things through your senses. The one truth that percolates out of that is that there is vastly more information about reality that you, than you could ever interpret. And one of the ways that engineers have thought about this is to create this concept of a black box. So a black box is a mental model that we can use to temporarily reduce the complexity only by focusing on inputs and outputs to the system. The idea of just looking at inputs and outputs, can you can apply this to any system. What I want to do is I'm going to often use this mental model without stating it explicitly. So I might, if let's say you have some knowledge about Bitcoin already and you feel as if I'm holding back or not explaining the full thing. That's because I'm trying to only explain one aspect of the system at a time. So when I'm explaining blocks, I'm not explaining UTXOs. When I'm explaining hashes and how they work together in, to form a chain, I'm not explaining mining. Like I can't explain it all at the same time. All these gears in the clock are working at the same time. We have to just focus on one gear at a time, or more specifically, we just focus on the inputs and outputs for a given part of the system. And that'll help us understand at least the role of that particular gear. 
as we move forward and learn more about the system, we can slowly expose more of that detail and we can show how the abstraction and how what we were talking about in abstract terms now becomes more concrete. So at first, when I talk about mining, I'm going to just talk about very high level aspects of it. Like how does, what is the purpose of mining? Why do we need mining? And then as we get a higher resolution of mining, I'm going to talk about hash functions and I'm going to talk about exactly which hash functions or uh, this is just one example. Abstractions help us simplify the world. And then as we as we understand the abstraction more and more, then we can move into more concrete terms. And oddly enough, this is actually how language is developed. At first, we talk about things in a very abstract way. The example that I'll give is the idea of the Greeks thinking about the world in very abstract, almost metaphorical ways. When you think about like Shakespeare, everyone talking in metaphor, then the scientific revolution happens and things become more concrete. And then you have people wandering around in 2019 talking very literally because that's the only way they know how to think, right? We've, we've lost our ability to abstract, even though that's the origin of how we originally developed language. So language may be our most powerful tool. Concrete terms refer to objects or events that are available to the senses, whereas abstract terms are limited to referencing ideas or concepts. They have no physical references. To understand the difference better, we can look to Plato and Aristotle and the early Greeks. For the pre-classical Greeks, light didn't travel through space and time, but it was a bridge between this world and the next. Now we can sort of understand how that's an abstraction. In the deepest sense, the idea of the sun being a bridge between this world and another is still metaphorically true, although we don't abstract it that way anymore. Plato believed light originated from the eye, and Aristotle believed that light was emitted from the sun and bounced off other objects, making them visible to the human eye. Plato and Aristotle were trying to take the abstraction they inherited, the black box that they were trying to understand this system, right? They were trying to understand it in more concrete terms. So. What Plato and Aristotle and the early Greeks were doing was they were scrutinizing all the black boxes around them. They were trying to understand what light was. They were trying to understand where it came from, what it meant. And they started off in this very abstract, oh, it's a bridge between this world and the next. And without getting into the science of relativity and time and whatnot, it sort of is a bridge between one world and the next. Now, of course, no one, no scientific person would ever use that exact language. That's why I say the word sort of. But the idea is, is that things start out very abstract and they move into more concrete terms. That's the progression of science. The language, belief systems, and mental models we operate in affect how we see and perceive the world. Information about reality is shaped by our beliefs that's passed through our senses, and then we reinforce this internal representation of reality. So the idea of Earth here isn't as great of an example as something like light or something that we know to ha Well, I guess I could use Earth as, as an example. Like, people used to have the belief that the world was flat. So when they looked out into the horizon, they, they believed that that was flat. They saw it as flat. That reinforced their belief that it, their internal representation that it was flat. Now we have maps of the world being round. Now, none of us, very, very few of us have ever gone up in the atmosphere high enough. We've never skydived from that from space to see the actual curvature of the Earth. But we all we all understand and perceive the world as being round in our head. And then we when we look out at the horizon, I'm pretty sure I could see a curve, but, but I don't know, like it's very slight, right? So am I seeing a curve or am I just believing that I probably shouldn't have used flat Earth as an example, but you, you get the idea. It's often the people that are willing to challenge the existing beliefs that change the way we see the world. Consider how engineers and artists have changed the way we think. Newton invented the telescope, calculus, and discovered three laws of motion. Leonardo da Vinci invented early concepts for the car, a helicopter, and his drawings for the muscular human structure were the basis for the first medieval anatomy textbook. His actual car was the first propelled vehicle in history and was the first programmable machine in history. So I call this the art of imaginary. We all look out into the world and try to perceive reality as best as possible, and then we create mental models of that reality in our mind. Inventors do the reverse. They see an imagination in their mind, and then they create that in reality. The art of Imagineering is the ability to see something internally and then use modeling, whether that's art, math, engineering, to build that reality externally. 
So artists see the world differently and scientists think about the world differently. That's how I perceive it, at least. Understanding how everyone perceives the world, how there is a limitation on how much of reality you can interpret at any given point in time. We can learn a lot from the way artists perceive the world. We can learn a lot from the way scientists perceive the world. In both cases, both, both in Leonardo da Vinci and in Newton, both of these people were artists and scientists. But we we perceive in culture, we perceive da Vinci as having been the artist and we perceive Newton as having been the scientist. But you'll see in the drawings that I included there, these are clearly, this car is clearly the, this is coming out of a scientific mind, right? And the same thing with Newton, this is coming, these drawings, these are coming out of an artistic mind. But modern people don't think about it that way anymore. People tend to think of Bitcoin in a few different ways. So first you have a digital coin, you have this idea of a blockchain. People think about the markets and then they ha think about it as a tool that they can use. So typically that's QR codes, right? But that may also be something like an address. Over on the left side, we have abstraction. The market is something more general and that QR code is the most concrete you can get. So as I go through this, I'm going to start with the high level abstraction. I'm going to talk about how how the masses will talk about that generally. And I'm also going to talk about what that means at a concrete level and I'm going to get as concrete as I can where there's still value, right? It wouldn't be valuable to talk about things in terms of binary, right? But we can talk about things at a fairly low level and be very concrete about what we're saying and still have that be valuable to you. In the next video, we're going to talk more about how to understand systems in the abstract so we can apply that thinking to the blockchain.